Davis, and I teach uh, introduction to TV production. And I also teach documentary production and storytelling, and I teach news writing. The TV production classes, I love teaching the extra layers that are involved in journalism and adding that layer into their storytelling. I love that. Well, I'm really new to teaching. This is only my second year of teaching. And before that, I've worked over 20 years in television. My main focus has been producing national documentaries. I did many for PBS and also for the Big Ten Network. Uh, and that was really my love. I love creating long format documentaries. And I was really lucky to have a chance to make, you know, many of them over the years, over 20 of them over the years and had a really great experience working collaboratively on those. When I first started in television, I worked at uh, the local PBS station and I was just kind of getting my hands on doing everything. I just graduated from college and I wanted to just get as much experience as I can. So I would just, I was a production assistant and I would do whatever I could in the studio. I had a chance to go out and be an assistant on some field productions, um, working with audio and um, doing some shooting. And I found that I loved that. I loved being out in the field and being able to interact with subjects and kind of experience their life for the day. And the station that I worked at started a magazine show uh, and I became the assistant on that show where we would do short features on people and places in Illinois. And that was an incredible like trial by fire of learning television because it was a show where I did every role. So I was the producer, I was the director, I was the videographer, I was the host. Every month I had to come up with a whole new half hour show and I did all the roles on it. And it was a blast. I got to travel all around Illinois and meet just amazing people. You know, the, the very first story I did was on a tattoo artist up in Rantoul, learning about the artistry of tattoo. A particular grouping of needles here is designed to make a real small incision in the skin. And even one of my coworkers yeah, decided to get a tattoo so I could uh, film that that be happening right in front of me. Um, I did a story on a llama farm. The same type of ten thousand dollar animal might bring twenty five hundred, which I like. And while I was there, the they one of the llamas had a baby, and they named the llama after me, and that was <laughs> that was really fun. Uh, you know, and I got to go up in um, gliders and you know big military planes and motorcycles and just traveling all around and having those incredible experiences. I I felt really lucky to have a chance to do that. And one of the things that also helped me a lot in my career was having wonderful mentors. For over 20 years, I had an incredible documentary partner, this man named Tim Harton, who still works at the university creating documentaries for the Big Ten Network. He's an incredible videographer and lighter, and um, my focus is really kind of more on writing and editing, so we made a really great pair. And I think this experience of having a mentor kind of drew me to teaching because I love the idea of being a mentor, and I want to be able to offer, you know, what I've learned over the last 20 years to them. I mean, ever since I was little, I loved to write stories. I was always really into writing. I would come up with long um, stories, write little books and enter them in like young authors contests and things like that. So I always was really drawn to writing. Um, and then when I came to Illinois, I got interested in kind of the broadcast side. I worked at WPGU, the radio station, and I, I loved the idea of creating broadcast content and, um, and telling stories on the air. My junior year, I studied abroad and I worked in London at a, um, a film production company. They made a lot of music videos. And that's really, I think, kind of flipped the switch for me on getting involved in wanting to do more of a visual um, side of storytelling, uh, learning how to, how to shoot and how to edit. So when I came back, I started looking for internships and in ways that I could learn how to do um, videography. And I, I took more, um, I took a photography class. I remember with Brian Johnson that really kind of helped me start thinking about composition and, and um, taking photos photographs. And then really just starting to work at WILL, uh, I, you know, they trusted me, they gave me the camera, and I'd, I'd go out and I worked with this man, um, Jeff Cunningham, 
um, they just give me a lot of feedback really on in the career. I kind of just learned by doing it, going out and trying to get the shots, covering the story as it's unfolding in front of me, and then coming back and editing that story together. If you go out and shoot and edit and you do it a lot, you learn this is how I need to shoot it in order to have something when I come back and edit that I can put together. After doing the magazine show at WILL, I just really wanted to do something more. I wanted to do a longer story. And so I just pitched to them, uh, can I do this long, uh, uh, an hour long documentary on Jean Driscoll, the, the wheelchair athlete. And, you know, surprisingly they said yes. Yeah, so I mean, I was lucky I had good mentors, people took a chance on me and I decided just to take a risk and go out there and just kind of figure it out as I was going along. I guess hands-on learning. Students should have a chance to experience it and do it. Um, and unless you're doing that, you're not really learning. I, want, I don't want to be just lecturing. I want them to actually do more projects, whether it's writing and rewriting, whether it's shooting and editing, um, being on camera. I want them to have the experience while they're here. And also giving them a lot of feedback, I think is really important. Taking the time to make, you know, detailed notes, talking to them individually, telling them what, um, you know, I think worked and didn't work. And um, that I think is helpful to them in, in formulating their own voice and thinking about what they want to pursue in the future. Because, you know, and also trying all these different things, it helps you learn maybe there's an aspect of journalism that you really like, like whether it's photography, whether it's being on camera, whether it's editing, whether it's lighting, um, anything. Like if you can get your hands on as much stuff now, then it'll help you uh, kind of figure out more of where your skills are, where your path is. I think we're at a, a renaissance time for documentaries. There's so many avenues now to be able to access documentary films, excellent documentaries, and you have so many more platforms as a filmmaker in being able to get your films out. I mean, just make a short film and get it on YouTube and you can get, you know, thousands of views for whatever you're wanting to create. The barriers to becoming a filmmaker are so much less than they used to be. It's good in the fact that it's allowing all these people to be more creative. It's bad when um, it misinformation is getting out there because some people are creating things without doing a lot of research. I'm not sure what it would be. Maybe just taking it one day at a time, which is something that has grown out of this pandemic. You can't really plan ahead too much because you don't know what's going to happen. And I think I'm really appreciative even more of just every day, you know, being mindful of this moment, being thankful of where we are and what we have.